Hi, my name's Tessa. So today I'm going to talk to you about multiple sclerosis, or as most people know it, MS. MS is a disease that affects around 200,000 people per year in the U.S. alone, and it's not as big as people might compare it to like cancer or something that's that, but it's still a pretty awful disease. MS is a disease that impacted my family. My grandma was diagnosed with MS after she had her second child in 1962. She also had diabetes and was bedridden or in a wheelchair for most of her life, as far as I can remember. Um, this is her before she was diagnosed with MS. She was very active, and then on the right is um, towards the end of her life. Um, she did live a pretty long life, which is good. But after seeing the effects of MS firsthand and doing some research on my own, I have a better understanding and I want to share some of that knowledge with you guys. Um, according to my survey results, few of you have had someone that you know or have heard of that's been affected by MS, but you didn't know a lot about it. Um, so the topics that I wanted to explore with you are the symptoms and some of the background information about MS the possible treatments if you're diagnosed, and the life expectancy um, if you are diagnosed as well. So MS is a disease that affects the central nervous system. Um, it affects the brain and the spinal cord, and it usually has to be confirmed by a neurospecialist. It's a very difficult disease. You have to go through a lot of tests that actually confirms that you have multiple sclerosis. Like I mentioned earlier, fewer than 200,000 people in the U.S. per year are affected, and that's according to the Mayo Clinic, and they, there's four types of MS that you can get, but your symptoms depend on the type of MS that you have and just are varied by the individual themselves. Some of the more common symptoms that you can experience are weakness, numbness and tingling, pain and cognitive changes. And some of the less common symptoms are speech problems, hearing loss, and seizures. Now I'm sure you can imagine any of those things would alter your daily activities and make it harder for you to live your normal life. While it's still possible for you to carry out normal day-to-day -day and live your normal life with MS, these make it harder in just some of the simplest ways. So next I want to talk about the four types of MS. Clinically isolated syndrome is one of the first, um, first signs of multiple sclerosis, and it has it isn't enough to be diagnosed as having MS, but it's one of the first stages. The next would be relapsing remitting MS, which is the most common type, and then primary progressive MS, which is a little few people have it, and then there's secondary progressive MS. Like I mentioned, relapsing remitting is the most common, and the episodes have inflam inflammatory attacks on your nerves and your brain, um, and the symptoms either disappear or they can become permanent. <coughs> progressive MS is more targeted towards the spinal cord lesions opposed to brain lesions and inflammatory attacks in, that you experience in relapsing remitting MS. And this is um, a healthy nerve, and then this is what it looks like when you're diagnosed with MS and your nerves are damaged. Uh, next, I wanted to talk to you about the possible treatments. Um, as of 2016, MS is still incurable, and there are very few treatments that prove to slow down the rate of progression. Primary progressive, which is the worst of the four types, has no treatments that have proven to slow down the progression of MS. Relapsing, remitting, there's medications and you can do physical therapy and everything like that, but um, the earlier you start, the better. However, it's still not a cure for MS. Um, they are doing research and they found some research that helps slow it down but nothing conclusive they uh, one of the studies that was done found that they're trying out stem cell research right now and it's helping with the lesser types a little bit but still not with the extreme cases of multiple sclerosis 
So finally, I wanted to talk to you about the life expectancy if you're diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, in a research study done by the Multiple International or Multiple Sclerosis International, they found that the most um, the easiest way to cope with multiple sclerosis and the way to have the longest life is a positive outlook. Since there's no real treatments for it, they don't have a cure, having a positive outlook and kind of accepting that you have the disease and learning how to live with it is the best way. As I previously mentioned, my grandma was diagnosed in 1962. She was 30 years old around the time and she lived to be 84 years old. So she lived a very long, happy life, even though she was hindered by some of the effects of multiple sclerosis. And they don't have, even though there's no treatment, they're still doing more research and they need to raise more awareness and more money for the, for the disease. And hopefully in the future, there will be a cure.